Hi, hi everyone, my name is Colette Matriga. Welcome to Colette's Temporary Thermi Kitchen. I'm a Thermomix consultant here in Australia with customers all over Australia and I'm very passionate about my Thermomix. I think it's a real game changer in anyone's kitchen. Tonight we are focusing on pizza dough because as I'm sure you know, I have a new pizza oven, the Ovana, and I am just loving it so much. And what I'm going to do is get started on this dough. Now, first of all, on Cookie Do, our recipe platform, as you know, there's over 77,000 different recipes. There are loads and loads of gorgeous pizza recipes, different ones for different types of pizzas. And there's even amazing gluten-free pizza bases too. Now, um, I'm going to be cooking my own or making my own pizza dough today, one that I love. I've got a few that I kind of rotate, and this is one of my favorites. But what I encourage you to do is to try different pizzas, uh, pizza bases and find ones that you actually love. So by all means, give mine a go. But what we're going to be doing after we make the dough is we're going to be looking at what happens when that dough comes out of the Thermomix. And that's where things can actually make a difference. So without any ado, let's get started. So first of all, I am going to do something that a lot of the cookie dough recipes don't do, and that's I'm going to ferment my um, yeast. Now, in a lot of the recipes, you just dump everything in together. Two minutes later, you're making your dough. And it's beautiful dough, don't get me wrong. But I just like to wake up that yeast and ferment it because it's going to give me a better flavor, more bubbles, more gas, a much lovelier dough. So into the Thermomix, I'm adding 150 grams just of filtered water. And then I'm also going to add into that some sugar. Now, I've got on my tray here sugar and salt. I've got to make sure I put the sugar in, so I'm just going to have a taste. That's the sugar. <laughs> really important you don't put the salt in. So the sugar's going in. The sugar feeds the yeast. They're best buddies. And then I'm going to add in, so that was about three quarters of a teaspoon of sugar. And when you're putting it into the Thermomix, make sure you drop it in the water not on top of that middle part of the blade. And then to that, I'm going to add in a teaspoon and a half of quick yeast. So that's going in, in the water, not on the center. And then I'm just going to get that going. It's gonna warm up the water, 37 degrees for two minutes. That will be fine, and at speed one. Now one of the great things about the Thermomix, the TM5, the TM31 and the TM6 is that it can actually bring things to temperature and hold them there, which is fantastic for all sorts of yeasty things and also for your cheese making as well. Now I just want to chat to you about the yeast. So I'm just using the good old yeast that you buy from Woolies and please remember to keep this in the fridge, it's going to last longer for you. But I want to just draw your attention to the little sachets. And often when I've gone around to people's houses and cooked with them, etc., they're using the sachets and there's a bit left over and they say, oh, just throw it all in. Of course you can do that, but what you're doing is you're changing the recipe. You want to stick to what your recipe says. And in my experience, usually the yeast is a little bit more than what is actually needed. If you put more yeast, into your recipe, what will actually happen, it's going to speed up that rising. So you're going to get your, your dough rising more quickly, which is great, but it slows down the fermentation, which means you're not going to get the flavor. So just remember that, stick to the quantity of yeast. Don't be tempted to throw a little bit more in. Um, you will get a nicer texture and a nicer flavor in your actually finished dough. So a little bit on the yeast. So this is nearly coming to temperature, but I just wanted to, um, oh, the, the Facebook page has been alive today with all these people that have got their Ivanas now, they have been delivered. So Vicky was saying that pumpkin um, caramelized onions, goat cheese and baby rocket. I totally get that on a pizza. That would be so amazing. Vicky, I'm, I'm with you there. Davina, she's having Mexican pizza tonight. That sounds intriguing. I love the sound of that. 
Mia. Mia is an amazing cook and a beautiful Thermomix advocate. She loves apple, walnut and blue cheese. I think that would be good too. What's the matter with these people? Oh, there's, there's no meat in any of these. <laughs> oh, I see, Andrew. Well, I hope the Mexican pizza at least has some tequila in it. <laughs> and um, Beck said, basically, you can't beat a good margarita pizza. And I have to agree because I'm going to be doing one of those tonight. I just love those really simple, basic ones. But have a look. There's so many great pizzas. The pictures are coming through, and I love seeing what you're doing with your Havanas. It's really exciting, and we're giving each other ideas. I love that. And mine is a... Oh, tonight I'm making Andrew, because I haven't got a lot in, and I didn't want to go to the shops. So I'm making him a Hawaiian with ham and pizza. And I've got a few leftover mushrooms. And pineapple. On there. I'm pineapple. Gonna... Yeah. All right, so just having a look here. Can you see there's lots of little bubbles and it started to ferment nicely and that has all mixed in beautifully so that's exactly what I want. Now I can basically dump in the rest of the ingredients but the order is really important. So in terms of order, the salt, so I've got about three quarters of tea, teaspoon of salt, that must go in last. Salt and yeast, they're enemies, they don't like each other. <laughs> okay, salt and sugar, best buddies, they love each other. And in fact, sometimes in that initial mix, I'll add in a teaspoon or two of honey, especially if I'm doing dessert pizzas. Um, the yeast loves that and it's going to feed on that. So into here now, I'm going to add in some um, olive oil. And that's going to give it a nice flavor. And I'm also going to add in some um, flour. So... I've got about 265 grams of flour, and I think it was about 20 grams of olive oil. What so, type of flour and olive oil? Good question, Andrew. So look, you, you use the olive oil that you love the most. I'm not a big olive oil flavor person, so I have, so this, this is, is my favorite go-to. It's nice and mild, and I just, I love that in my cooking. As like I said, I use heaps of it. Um, so that's everything now and in terms of flour you can use whatever flour you want don't get hung up too much on that tonight i'm using baker's flour one of my other favorite pizza recipes i actually use some uh, some semolina in there as well yes you can make your pizza dough with plain flour you can make it with double o which is beautifully refined and soft italian flour so um, it will give it a different kind of texture with the baker's flour, you've got that higher protein content, so it's going to be really good. So the lid's going on, and then all I have to do, just check that I haven't forgotten anything, because sometimes when you're doing live, you know, you say, oh, thank you, Andrew. Oh my God, what would I do without you? I nearly forgot the salt. Why we need the salt? <laughs> the salt is going to add flavor. So I'm just going to put that on top of the flour, so it's nowhere near the yeast, and then it's all going to be dispersed nicely. And then I'm going to go to the dough function. So TM5, TM31, TM6, we all have the dough function. And I'm just going to knead that for a simple two minutes. Okay, and off we go. You need a sip of your drink. I do, cheers. It's the weekend. I hope you're having a beautiful weekend. A lovely day today. Mm. And I hope them. Um, Western Australia's got salmon in now, so you can make that beautiful dish I made the other night. I think you heard me. Maz asked about your, um, your little measuring spoon here. Oh my gosh, yes. I wish I could buy these and I would sell loads of them. This well, is what, what did you do? Did you steal it? No, I, I did buy it. I bought it from the Spirit House, um, a beautiful cooking store up on the Sunshine Coast. And um, what I love about it is you can just switch it along to the quantity that you need so you're not having to worry about all the different spoons but what we need to remember and this is a good learning point most of our measuring spoons are American so Joseph and Joseph have a version of this which is plastic which is great not my favorite but I love this one a tablespoon in America is only 15 grams so if I'm using a tablespoon of something, I'll make sure it's just heaped over a little bit more. Teaspoons are the same. In Australia, tablespoons are 15 grams. I've got that, sorry, tablespoons are 20 grams. So um, just be careful on that one, because with things like this, it can make a difference. 
Remember how we were talking about yeast? <laughs> Thank you, Colette. That was as clear as mud. Was it? Yeah, no, I think we can edit that bit out. Oh, I hope it was clear. <laughs> I didn't mean it not to be clear. Nearly done. So we've been eating a lot of pizza, Andrew, haven't we? Oh, my goodness. So, um, nearly there. A couple of seconds more to go. Yeah, but that chicken and bacon pizza was just superb. That was, I have to say, Absolutely I, superb. I, I stole a slice last night and I have to agree. Excuse me, about half the pizza. I had a couple of slices, okay. It was really good. I kind of wish that I had that instead. So this is enough pizza to make two. One for Andrew, one for me. And you can easily double this if you want to make four. But look how fantastic that is. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move my Thermomix out of the way. I just love how easy the Thermomix makes things like pizzas and breads and doughs. Absolutely phenomenal. So leave that there. Right, so I'm now going to use my Thermomax. I'm sure many of you have these Thermomax already. And what I love about it, it's going to help me get the sizing right for what I want to do with my pizza in terms of positioning it out. Now what I will do is I'm just going to show you how I shape these and this is going to probably be a little bit different to how quite a lot of you make them so with the cookie dough recipes typically what you do is you you release your dough so remember turning that round just get that out just about there and then we will just flatten that roll it up in the mat set it to a side for about 15 minutes and then that would have been risen and then we flatten it down and use it i'd love you to try a different method for better flavour, better texture. I'm just going to get rid of this, Andrew. All right, so what we're going to do with this, so the average kind of individual pizza would be about 225 grams, which is about half of this. Um, we could pop this onto the Thermomix just to see, but that looks about fine for me. And the way to do that, what I like to do is just to push this down, and then I want air in my pizza. So I'm just going to pull this, a little bit like we do when we make sourdough and then I'm going to take the top bring that into the middle take this top bring that into the middle so you can see inside of this or you can imagine inside of this I've got lots of little air and gaps which I like I'm going to turn that over and now I'm going to shape it so with my hand just like rolling a roll I'm going to cap it with my hand and I'm going to put pressure on this side here and I'm just going to start rolling that. So what I'm looking for is a lovely, shiny, tight pizza dough or pizza ball. Now, so that's happening here. Don't worry if you get air bubbles on the top. That's, that's good, actually. I like those happening. What I'm now going to do is to take my hand slightly angled, pull it across, pull it down, okay? Pull it across, and what I'm doing is I'm actually tightening that dough so you only need to do this a couple of times, bringing it down. And then a final round we go, giving it nice and tight, and that's great. Now, if you haven't got a thermo mat, you don't need extra flour when you're doing this. Just remember that with your um, pizza, you don't want to be introducing extra flour because that's gonna make it tougher. All right, so next dough we're going to do, um, Exactly the same, I'm going to do this real quick. So just shaping that down, so pulling it, creating those air gases. Okay, in and in, flipping it over and giving it that turn. And then just in and down, in and down. So getting a nice tight, and that looks fairly good. All right, then what I would do is I would put these onto a tray and I'd leave them to rise. You could actually cover them up here quite nicely. On the tray, I would put some semolina so it doesn't stick. And you wanna make sure you're leaving plenty of room in between these. And that will take about an hour to double in size. Once you've done that, I would then pop it in the fridge, ideally overnight. Um, you could even leave it for two days. And what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be getting a really nice texture with your pizza ball. So I'm just gonna move these guys over here out of the way um, for now. I can freeze these pizza balls quite comfortably if I want to. 
um, and use them for another night, which is what I will do. So here is my pizza dough that has been, I did this last night. So what I am now going to do is I'm just going to pick this up and I don't want to disturb those beautiful gases, etc. You can see it's already in a round shape. But what I do want to do is introduce more semolina. This is an important step. All right, so I'm just going to throw some more semolina. It's got semolina already on the bottom because I put some down on the tray before it went into the fridge and before it started to rise. Now, what we want to do is to create our circular shape. Now, what I don't want to use is a rolling pin. Why? Andrew, why wouldn't I use a rolling pin? Because you've packed it and we haven't got one. I have actually, <laughs> but um, I wouldn't use a rolling pin because I don't want to knock out all those beautiful gases in this pizza dough. But what I will do, put a bit of semolina on my hands and I'm going to start in the middle and with, not with my fingertips, I'm not doing focaccia. So with these here, I'm actually just going to spread this out and it's okay to put a little bit of pizza. Oh, this, I love the toastiness. So I'm just going to spread this out. Now, you don't go right to the edge because we want that kind of a lip happening. And then I'm going to flip that over and do exactly the same. So, flipping. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is flip that over again. Now, there are a whole number of different techniques that you can definitely be using. Um, one quite popular technique is to hold this with your hand to actually open up your other hand and drag it out and flip it over or of course we know the one where we've got the this is actually now fairly thin but once you've got to this stage you can take your knuckles and you can actually drive the bus and start to flip it round okay so drive, drive the bus yeah it's like driving a bus you're going round and round with, the, with, with that on your knuckles now I've got a couple of holes if you have a couple of holes what you don't want to do is try and flip it over we're going to take a little bit of dough and I'm just going to try and plug that hole. So that's looking good, happy with that. Make sure it's not sticking underneath. I'm not sure what that is. Okay, now tonight I'm just doing a, a quick, beautiful margarita. So hopefully that's giving you a few hints and tips on your dough. And then what happens is once your dough is in the fridge overnight, you take it out an hour before you want to use it, and then you bring it to room temperature, and then you start to shape it again all right so now what i'm going to do is to grab some tomato sauce for everyone who's listening i can assure it that them that having tasted this style of, of base for the pizza you you won't replicate it from anything frozen or pizza hut or anything it's anything at all which is takeaway or these are the, the flavors that you get from the pizza base are unlike anything i've ever tried so so tomorrow in my live, I'm going to be giving you my tomato sauce recipe and my barbecue sauce recipe. And what I do is I have these, I make a big pot and I just freeze them in these bags nice and flat. So this was taken out of the freezer about half an hour ago and it's now ready. I can, actually, can you smell it? And I can, the smell is beautiful. Well, it's a combination of, you can smell the tomato, but you can also smell the, the dough of the pizza. Mm -hmm. So, I mean... All that fermentation and the gas and, yeah, nice. So, remember, we don't need the heat. What I always recommend is for what, a 12-inch pizza, you want about half a cup of sauce. And we don't go right to the edge. We don't need to do that. That looks beautiful. It smells so good, actually. And then, on top of this, a simple, simple margarita. I'm just going to put some little dollops of uh, mozzarella... Simple pizza. And he likes lots of filling on his pizza. It's a constant battle we have, Andrew, isn't it? I get at least four or five layers on my pizza. <laughs> you want to be careful. You don't want too much topping. Remember, it's about that beautiful dough. So lots of lovely mozzarella. And then just to finish off, some lovely basil. And I'm going to make some gorgeous pesto with this to have with my leftover gnocchi, which is in the freezer. That was such a lovely thing. I'm going to do a lovely gnocchi sauce, and you might have that tomorrow. So just putting on here just some nice basil. You're going to season it? I'm definitely going to season it, yes. Thank you, honey. Remember, you always season before, during, and after. 
you don't season it right at the end. So that's going to be good. I like lots of basil. Colette, there's a piece of art. You could frame that <laughs> hanging on the wall.